A lot of people have asked me why I haven't done a backlight mod on the channel on a uh, Game Boy Pocket. Now there's a couple of reasons. The first one being it's an incredibly difficult challenge. Doing a backlight mod on anything is a difficult challenge. Getting the reflective film off the back of the screen is an incredibly difficult thing and I've broken many and many a screen trying to do it which has basically ruined videos and wasted money. The second reason is that it doesn't actually make the Game Boy Pocket better. By backlighting the screen, what you're essentially doing is reducing the contrast. Now you can tackle this again with biverting it. Um, however, biverting the Game Boy Pocket is an incredibly difficult thing. So what we're gonna be doing then is backlighting it. I'm gonna talk about how to do it and then I'm gonna talk about why I haven't really done a lot of it in the past. So hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're gonna be backlighting a Game Boy Pocket. So this is the Game Boy Pocket that I recently repaired. Um, the video was actually featured on Lad Bible and has something like 1.4 million views, uh, which is really, really funny um, because it's a Game Boy. That's not exactly the most Lad of things, but uh, yeah, obviously they liked it and um, a lot of people also liked it as well. And there's a new surge of people on the channel from that. So welcome to those of you who are new. So without any further ado, let's crack on inside of the Game Boy Pocket. So I peeled off the reflective um, film and polarizer. Now, we're probably gonna find out that the whole thing is completely broken. So let's pop the uh, screen back on. This is always the most daunting part. Um, and I hate it, I hate it, hate it with a passion. Here's the backlight kit. You can buy this for about five pounds and 99 pence. So you have a ginormous replacement um, polarizer film. You have a resistor, a Q-tip, and a replacement uh, wire. Here's the backlight um, module. What we'll do is slide that underneath and then we'll take our big polarizer film and slot that in between. That actually looks like we get a slightly better contrast if this is slightly tinted, tilted. So what we'll probably do is cut that diagonally, but for now we'll just have to do it like this. If we turn it on for the moment of truth and look at that, we've still actually got full functionality of the screen. That is so incredibly, incredibly relieving. So if, as I said, if I tilt this slightly, you see we get a way better contrast than if we um, tilt it like that. So we'll cut that um, in the right way, in the right orientation. Depending on the kit that you buy, you might not have to do it at all, but we're gonna need to do it for our one. So I'm gonna stick the polarizer film down um, that we've just removed on the back, and then I'm just gonna cut around the outside. So the next thing to do is remove the front protective film that's on the uh, backlight kit. Be careful not to lift up the whole um, backlight panel. These things, the diffuser panel rather, these things aren't the highest of quality. Slide that behind, keeping the two little uh, cables, wires to the side, like so. Grab yourself a little bit of sellotape and then stick the ribbon cable down to the back of the backlight kit. 
just like that. And that will just A, protect the ribbon and B, keep the um, backlight in the right place. So there we go, just like that. That keeps everything nice and snug. Don't worry everyone, we're getting there. The next thing to do is to solder the backlight onto the motherboard because obviously it needs power. Now some of these slightly newer backlights come with a little uh, resistor. Um, we're gonna need one of these for our one and it was included in the kit. So this needs to go um, onto this point right here, which is gonna be uh, powering the backlight. And then this over here is the ground. So what we're gonna need to do is add the uh, resistor onto the red wire. Okay, there we go. Solder the uh, resistor onto the actual board. So you might wanna add a little bit more solder onto the point, just so there's enough, and then touch it on like this. Happy days. And then the black one needs to go over to this side. And just like that, our soldering is all done. So now what we can do is actually test this thing whilst it's all still open. So be very, very careful with the wires not to damage them and go ahead and plug the ribbon cable back in to the back like so. Pop your batteries in. And then we can go ahead and turn it on. Our Game Boy Pocket now has a backlight. If I turn off this light, we'll be able to see it a little bit better. No, no, not really, but yeah, there we go. The backlight is now installed. So now what we need to do is just go ahead and reassemble the Game Boy. So it's finally done. I've backlit a Game Boy Pocket. I did do it once before, um, but it was in a, a completely different mod series where I was ch turning a Game Boy Pocket into a Game Boy Lite. So let's have a quick talk about what has happened. So the kit that I ordered, it for some reason came with a replacement front polarizer. Now I'll definitely contact the seller and uh, ask him why and let him know that he's selling a front polarizer and not a back one. The issue with that is we've now got a, um, a slightly different contrast that we would have done. So this isn't exactly a perfect test medium for um, for talking about a uh, backlit Game Boy Pocket. But if I go ahead and turn it on, you can see it's worked great and I have got a backlight. Um, I have actually turned off my light from above because if we have that one as well, then we've got a real um, you know glare on the screen. But uh, yeah, this is what we're now dealing with. You can see as I turn up the contrast wheel, that's completely overexposed and then that is like completely underexposed or under contrasted, whatever. So the balance in the middle is basically, is basically that. That's not a joke because any darker and we start having a background just full of black pixels and any lighter and it's just, it's just invisible. So it's not bad. It definitely looks a lot worse on camera, but it's definitely incredibly difficult to see. Um, you know, when, when you look at it in, in, in person, it's definitely not as bad. But the problem is, is that there's no blacks anymore. Everything is an incredibly light gray. So as you're moving around, you know, it's, you can see it. And with the backlight, you know, this does actually make it visible um, in the dark. But the biggest problem, is that everything's gray, everything is, is gray. There's no blacks. So it's just all faint. Now you can correct this, as I said, by using a, um, a bivert chip. Now, I have done a bivert on a Game Boy Pocket before, but it was just a really, really difficult thing. Um, so yeah, you gotta let me know what you think in the comment section below. In my opinion, backlighting a Game Boy Pocket isn't strictly worth it without biverting, but biverting is not a very easy thing to do. So let me know what you think. If you're gonna do a mod to a Game Boy, I would definitely start off with a DMG Game Boy. A Game Boy Pocket's just a little bit more tricky. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.